Welcome, good evening everybody. It's great to be back for another edition of the Painesville Area Schools um, District Livestream Town Hall. Uh, welcome to everybody who's joining us either on YouTube Live or Facebook Live. Um, I appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to learn a little bit more about what's going on at school and, and what's happening in the school district. Tonight we've got two very important topics um, to discuss. The first one is um, an elementary initiative that is going on. We are in the process of opening up a new communications lab at our elementary school, so we're gonna tackle that uh, topic first. And then secondly, um, obviously anybody who has driven by the secondary school, um, or for that matter, the elementary school this summer, we have a, a large scale facility project going on um, in both buildings. We'll, We'll spend probably the last 10 minutes or so tonight just going over kind of a, a live update as far as 
how construction is going, what uh, what tasks are being accomplished, and, and where things are going um, from there. So those are the two topics this evening. My pleasure to be joined by our elementary principal, Mrs. Mary Holmberg. Welcome. Thank you, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So um, I'll kind of turn it over to you. And if you want to start with the um, communications lab and, and kind of give some background and, and how everything got started with that. Awesome. Okay. Well, it's an exciting time for us here at Painesville Area Elementary Schools. First of all, a great big shout out to um, the Painesville Area Community Foundation for your grant that allowed us to, to complete the communications lab project. Uh, the communications lab is what was what used to be our computer lab. And now that all of our Painesville area students are one-to-one, -one, we have no need for that computer lab that many of us grew up with. You know, with the, the standard rows of stationary computers and the kids seated, you know, one and a half feet apart or whatever that was. Um, so we made up a plan and, and we've completely renovated that computer lab and now we call it our communications lab. All right, so the, this evening's format is very similar. I was supposed to do this in the intro. It, it's kind of funny. I, I have to have full disclosure. Um, so at, before we started, Mary and I were just chatting a little bit, and, and so she had uh, she jinxed me, I think. Um, she looked at me and she said, oh, Matt, you know, do, you, do you still get nervous with these things? And my response was, well, after we get past the intro, it usually goes pretty well. And here I missed the most important part of the intro, so I apologize. I'm going to rewind a little bit. Um, this is an interactive town hall, so if you have questions, by all means, please post those questions in YouTube Live or Facebook Live. We will do our best to try and answer all questions. If we miss one, it's not our intent, but uh, we are not perfect, and sometimes we will miss one, uh, but we will try to answer all those questions. So feel free to answer those questions. Anything else about the communications lab? All right, well, we'll wait until you ask me your first question. All right, we have a short video also <laughs> that's um, uh, been produced and, and ready to go for the communications lab. So, so let's go ahead and roll that video, and we'll be back. All right, good morning. I'm here with uh, STEAM coordinator Ben Borgerding, and he's going to kind of show us around the facility over here, the makerspace at the elementary school a little bit. So Ben, do you want to tell us where we're at today? Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Ben. Like Jarek said, I'm the STEAM coordinator here at the elementary. Um, we're in the kind of collaboration area of our makerspace. So you can see the, our art carts with a lot of raw materials and kind of standalone activities. All right, and then as you get into this larger space, um, we have more tables than we would normally have, but this is where the students then are working and um, as much as they can, collaborating on the, the projects that they're working on. Perfect, so uh, in this space, what would typically be on the, the tables on any given uh, normal school day for your STEAM classes? So the goal is to start with nothing and then they have to gather their materials, so it really depends on the project. Um, and that's where they're gathering the materials from the yeah, uh, so things over here. The so carts. all the different supplies are over here. And you know, as we look at that, there's crayons, there's yarn, there's string, there's popsicle I mean, sticks, popsicle sticks the construction paper, just a variety. So they take that material, you know, once they have an initial design, bring it to the table. And on the table, then they create their project. Yeah, they start putting everything together, making a mm -hmm. mess. <laughs> yeah and then it's cleaning up from there. Um, and then we'll use this white table sometimes if uh, for younger kids and whatnot that have more limited supplies to choose from. Um, and then the Lego tables are generally used for Legos. Uh, last year we did a pretty cool project where we actually tipped them up at an angle and they used them for a Lego marble maze, which was a lot of fun. That is neat, awesome. So now we're in kind of the other half of the maker space. So what, what do we see on this side of the So fence? this side of the maker space is kind of the prefab space. So once they have their ideas um, and they've worked with them a little bit more and they have kind of a more concrete idea of what that could actually turn into or they need to build something, then they come back here where we have um, on this side a lot of our tools 
um, will actually power tools and more specific function stuff, plus a lot of extra clutter. We're just, um, things have to have a place to go right now when we're not using them. Um, and we're still working on some storage solutions for that. So power tools are kind of on this side. And then um, over here we have more of the, in this container, we have yeah, see, hammers, uh, wrenches, yeah, screws, screwdrivers. Yep, uh, all sorts of different stuff. So I did notice you have an abundance of cardboard over in this corner. Um, can you talk about what uh, we use cardboard for around here? So cardboard is an amazing raw material. You can do a lot of stuff with it. It's got a rigid structure. So when it comes to building things, um, it's just, it makes an amazing raw material. You can turn almost anything into something else with cardboard. Yeah, I noticed that uh, the bird barn up there, yeah. I think that was built back during a staff meeting a while back. And what are the like little blue screws? Uh, those are from a make-do kit. Okay. So those are actually screws designed for uh, connecting cardboard awesome. together. So it's like carpentry. So obviously we have uh, two maker bots here. So uh, they're working on something right now. Uh, do you just want to tell us a little bit about the 3D printers and the uses around here? Yeah, so the, the 3D printers run quite often. Uh, Mr. Wolf does a lot of projects with his fifth graders. Um, and so they're, they're usually cranking out stuff for that. Um, in terms of steam, we'll use them when uh, students are creating a project and they need that um, special piece that you know doesn't exist or um, would be hard for them to get on their own. So this is where we could print that piece for. So I know currently the makerspace over here is going through a name change. So eventually it will not be makerspace. So. Talking about well, could be. renaming, or it might be make sense, that is on the list. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, we have the Launchpad, Imagination Center, uh, Innovation Station, the Collaboratory, Imagination Destination. So do you want to talk a little bit about the names and kind of the process? Yeah, so it's kind of like I told the students. Right now, it's called the Makerspace, but only really because other schools call similar spaces a Makerspace. And because it's a creative space, we can be creative with the name too, so we don't have to be the same as every other school. So um, I had asked the staff to come up with some naming options. And these are the six that the, the staff at actually both buildings came up with. And then the students will vote. And my goal is to do some sort of ranked voting so that they can see how that works when you uh, grade something on a scale of one, two, or three. And so maybe you don't get your first option, but your third option might come in. And just to uh, see how that affects um, the scores or the, the ranks that names are, are getting when they're voted on. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Borgany, for the tour today. Uh, any last words you want to tell us at all? Uh, farewell. Just keep making stuff. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So today, Mr. Wolf's going to tell us a little bit about the new communications lab. So um, before we start, he is now in the um, old elementary computer lab, which used to be um, used for computer classes and have a bunch of computers in here. But with technology changing, um, it's now communications lab. And with COVID, our fifth graders and I are using it as a classroom so we can properly social distance. Uh, so. Being that our fifth graders are in here, we can still use the new equipment. So Mr. Wolf, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the communications lab? 
Yeah, so with our communications lab, it's a work in progress trying to get it up and going. Even though it's going to be a, um, a classroom, we are still getting it ready for a communications lab. For example, we have windows here and we need to put up some, some curtains type stuff. And so we got a team of, of fifth graders in here that are working on getting curtains made using the sewing machines in the makerspace area. We also have a, a team that helps put together furniture and stuff like that, and they just put together one table. Um, there's another, some other stuff coming in, so they'll be doing that. Um, just getting the stuff ready to go for the communications lab. Um, we're still kind of experimenting where we want to put up the TV monitors, put the uh, podcast booth. We're going to kind of play around with that. So these guys are kind of like guinea pigs and, um, and helping try and set up the best possible setup for a communication lab. So we're getting there with communications lab, so um, this is just the, the start of it, but probably maybe December we'll do a kind of an update, uh, or January do an update and show off where everything will be and, and where it found its home. So anything else you'd like to add today? Um. No, other than the fifth graders are really excited about um, not only getting this set up for a communication lab, but also actually using it. So. Yeah, and once this does get rolling, it'll obviously be used for more than just the fifth grade. Yep. You know, it'll be all the elementary students are able to use it. Um, just with the COVID regulations, it, it has become a fifth grade classroom for the uh, foreseeable future. And so that'll probably change in, again uh, as time moves on. So thank you, Mr. Wolf. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. A quick shout out quickly to uh, Garrett Grace, Ben Borgading, Colin Wolf. Thank you very much for your assistance with um, putting together a, a little snippet of, of the Makerspace Communications Lab and, and uh, what, how that space is being used at the elementary school. Um, so Mary, a couple questions, I guess. So first of all, maybe um, just a little bit about kind of the, the why behind um, a communications lab. Awesome. Well, we know that our kids need the soft skills to be able to effect, effectively communicate. And so, like I said before, we, we, don't, we all have one-to-one -one devices now. So what could we do next to help our kids to communicate in different modes? They don't need to be sitting in front of a computer that doesn't move. And so then the team got together. Those are the people that Mr. Um, Buller just talked about. So Garrett Grace and Colin Wolf, Ben Borgerding, Matt, myself, Jonah Johnson. Um, and we just had some really good conversations about what can we use in this space? What's our dream? What's our pie in the sky? And what's most appropriate for kids at the pre-K through fifth grade, grade levels? Um, and then we, we just thought about out of the box kinds of things. Like what skills will our kids need when they go to the middle school and high school? What will they need beyond that? What can we use as introduction for these kids? And how can we tap into their unique interests and their unique talents and give them a space to do that? And that's how this all unfolded. Um, we just want the kids to be prepared for the future. So that became our why. And we had the space available. And, and fortunately, Paines Area Schools is, is prioritizing technology and, and those technical skills. So let's work that into our communication skills, too. So being in the elementary building on a daily basis, I'm sure you've seen a lot of different things going on in that space. But do you maybe just highlight a couple things that, in your mind, as you as you either observed them or maybe took part in some of them, just kind of struck you as interesting. What's the most interesting learning activities you've seen, either in the makerspace or, or um, in the communications lab? Cool. Well, the communications lab is easy because our furniture and most of the equipment just came in within the last two weeks. So uh, Mr. Wolf has kindly sought out the resources that his students have to offer. He found, as you saw in the video, a group of uh, students who were interested in sewing and had sewing abilities. So he assigned them the task of making curtains for the bar height tables. You saw two kids that were sitting there that were working um, and the curtains will provide that visual barrier between the communications lab and the media center. So those kids are actively involved. They got to, you know, order fabric. And well, first, of course, they had to do the measuring and decide what they'd all need. They ordered fabric. They ordered thread. Um, then there was a group of kiddos that were in there that were actually assembling the tables for the audio booth. So they had to go to the maker space and, and find what tools they needed and bring them back and put that table together. Um, so that was really exciting to see. 
On the other hand, when we go and look in the makerspace with Mr. Borgerding, I'm seeing lots of interesting things with teaching kids the basics of using a device. So how do they log in? How do they use Clever? What are some sites that they can use that will help them um, use the... Oh, I just lost my train of thought. The 3D printers. Um, those kids are working on some pretty interesting things and being taken to the next level through our technology process. Mr. Borgerding also offers different opportunities for kids. So some may be interested in the engineering piece of how do I build you know, a skyscraper, and then they're watching a video that shows them how to do that while other kids actually want to build a skyscraper. So they're in a program in Tinkercad on their devices and they're creating 3D skyscrapers that they can then send off and print. Cool. I and mean, I think that's pretty cool for this stage of the game in a, a hybrid learning model. Excellent. So the, it's the natural next question then, so what's next? I mean, where, where do you take this and how do you leverage it for, um, for most efficient learning or to maximize student skills? Absolutely. Well, we're in hybrid now. So Mr. Wolf's classroom and his students are the fortunate kiddos that get to be in there 24-7 during our school day. Um, so they're getting the benefit of the communications lab all to themselves right now. But moving forward, that's a really good opportunity for Mr. Wolf and those kids to become mentors for the rest of their fifth grade peers. And then again, to take what they've learned and apply it with our youngest learners in our pre-K through four settings. So that's going to be a really, really nice opportunity to, to share what they've learned. We also um, plan to do our morning announcements live. We can live stream them. We got some GoPros and we've got the ability now to be able to do that. So moving forward, you know, again, it's only been two weeks. Uh, we plan to do that instead of using the intercom system that we do every morning at 820. So that'll be an exciting piece for us as well. There are just lots of little things coming up that'll allow the expansion of what we're doing in there from slow motion animation to videos in front of the blue screen to um, the audio podcast and, and that whole design process of coming up with an idea and then designing it, giving it a trial run, going back and editing and fixing it, putting it through the production process and then sharing it out. It's just gonna be fantastic for our learners. Excellent. Excellent. That's definitely exciting. It's it's uh, interesting to to go by those spaces. I mean, you you walk by whether it's the communications lab at the elementary school or the maker space, or you come over to the secondary building and you look at the innovation center. You look at the remodeled CTE space, and it just it's it's incredibly powerful and exciting yeah. to be able to see kids engaged in something that they're passionate about, that they really care about, that there's intrinsic motivation yes. to I want to succeed, I want to excel. Yes. And it's just a, a tremendously powerful experience to be able to to see that. Um, Absolutely. And then the kids that come up and are super excited to share with you because they are just, they're beyond thrilled with what their production process is or what they've already produced. And those kids that are so into what they're doing, they don't even notice there's another person in the room. Excellent. Uh, reminder, if you have questions, you can submit your questions. We will try to answer as many questions as we can uh, this evening. Um, we are going to transition now and talk a little bit about the facility project. Um, we do have some, some images and a, a short presentation that will um, get up uh, on the screen. Um, so I'm going to just walk you through kind of a, a snapshot over what's been happening since the, I believe it's October 2nd is how far back I went. So roughly it's kind of a snapshot as to what's happening in the month of October with the facility project. This first image, you can see that uh, that roof deck that was installed there, that is viewing, that's looking to the north. Um, so the person who's actually taking that photo is on our existing um, uh, roof and they are, are looking to the north um, and that, that new roof deck is now what is going to be the new um, automotive shop. You'll uh, get a couple snapshots of what the inside is gonna look like here in just a bit too. Um, so moving forward, you can see that uh, during October there was a lot of underground work that was, was being completed. The underground work included uh, getting some electrical roughed in, but also a lot of uh, the plumbing needs that needed to be um, completed in the community center, multi-purpose room, the new community ed office space, the atrium uh, entrance, um, as well as that automotive center that we, we saw already. <clears throat> The block work, uh, October was filled with masons uh, out in the, in, in the area or on the construction site. 
Um, it was quite impressive, actually, to watch this group uh, really move kind of very systematically through the whole um, construction project and, and see them go from space to space. And, and actually, they, they hit a couple of snags um, that were outside of their control with, with some weather and some other things that uh, it was pretty impressive to watch them just uh, be pretty fluid and nimble and pick up and, and go and, and keep going where they could and, and come back. Um, to what they needed to later. Uh, you can kind of get a, a snapshot here. So this image is actually, it's probably technically what is going to be inside. The, the person taking this photo would be inside the multi-purpose wrestling room space. When it's finished, that's where they will be. But it's a, it gives you a good look as to the burnished block that we'll, we're trying to match up to the existing block that's in the, the uh, hallway as you go towards into the main entrance of the auditorium. So you can kind of see that burnished look that'll be on the main entrance of the community center. And the width of that, as you look at that uh, image, that width of that burnished block there, that also gives you an idea of how wide that lobby and atrium space as it uh, juts out over to that community center, how wide that space is going to be as well. Looking back now, you're, you're heading, looking to the south. So the, the walls and windows that you see um, just to the left of that ladder, that's actually looking into the existing fitness center. Um, so what's going to be uh, in these two spaces here is um, a cardio room. And then there will also be a, a group fitness room are the, the two um, pieces that are going to be in this uh, space in the image. The community education offices are going to transition to the, the new addition. Um, so this image here is actually uh, facing west and uh, the, the community ed office will kind of be that focal office as people would enter the, the main entrance on the west side. Um, this image, the, the photographer in this image is standing um, just uh, probably in the, the lobby atrium area. You can see all the PVC that's coming up that's uh, roughed in plumbing. Um, so you can see where there will be uh, restrooms and um, so there's a custodial room that has has uh, water and, and a drain connected to it. And then uh, if the image would pan a little further to the right, you would see a lot more plumbing because that's where the main rest area or restroom area for the addition would be. Um, the contractors have been busy uh, in our earlier October. Um, and as you can see, you're probably going to be able to date these photos pretty well because there's no snow in them yet. Um, but the contractors were uh, busy getting the final grade on the community center floor. This is just prior um, to the, the pouring of the cement slab that went into the community center. Here's a, an inside photo of the automotive shop. Again, the, this is that roof deck that we started with. You can see the ceiling joists, you can see uh, the roughed in um, electrical getting, getting going. Um, and then this image was taken just prior to the uh, finishing of the rough in work, which then um, cleared the way for the, the cement floor to be poured as well. So this is a kind of a, a main point here because that the um, hole in the wall, that's gonna be a, a clear overhead door um, that actually will be the connection point for our metal shop. So the CTE space that went through the remodel this summer, will the, the remodeled CTE space and the auto shop are going to connect um, through this, this uh, corridor, this uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what the best way to describe it. Um, I'd, I'd call it a breezeway, but it's the wrong term, but it's just this small um, passageway that will happen between the two. Um, this will be structured in such a way that we could actually get materials delivered for, say, the metal shop if we wanted to. Could be delivered through the auto shop. In fact, you'd be able to get all the way from the auto shop back to metals, back to woods, um, with delivering raw materials through the series of overhead doors that are, are installed. The exterior um, photo, there will be three bays in the auto shop. Uh, this image here also focuses on the roof. The new roof um, was installed above that decking that we started with um, as well. Again, the, the weather was cooperating, so this was probably a, a week and a half ago or so when they finished up that, that um, auto shop roofing. 
Um, the multi-purpose wrestling room, they've also um, installed the, the roof deck um, over, over that, so the, the um, ceiling joists are in, and that uh, roof deck is, is um, installed as well. Uh, there's a piece then that is one of the features of this. Um, there will be a, a mezzanine of that, um, that wrestling room, uh, multi-purpose space. This mezzanine is going to house all of our uh, mechanical equipment. Um, it'll be our, our um, entrance point for the uh, fiber connection for our internet coming into the building. Um, it'll really warehouse all of the, the uh, um, guts of the building will be in that uh, mezzanine. The, uh, just prior to the, the uh, snow, they did have an opportunity to get the cement slab poured in the community center. Um, that's obviously a large piece of concrete that was poured. They did that in um, two, two sections. Um, they took the, the west half uh, one day and then they came back and finished it up with the east half um, the, the following day. Uh, there you can see a little bit more. Now this is closer to being at the base of that mezzanine. You can see the, the steel joists that are the closest to this, uh, who's ever taking this photo. Um, the, that would be the floor, or that, um, the deck that that uh, mezzanine will sit on. And if you follow that steel um, uh, column up, you can see where the, there's that, um, the, the roof is also connected and put together. So it gives you a little bit of an idea as far as how um, tall that, that mezzanine will be. Um, here's an inter uh, uh, interior photo of the automotive room, um, or the shop. They had the, the painting completed, so the joists and decking, um, they were all painted the bright white. It will match the CTE space. Um, this image gives you a little bit of a, an idea about the, um, the clearance that we're talking about. I believe um, the, the headroom in this auto shop will be 17 feet from the bottom of, of the joist system to the floor. To give you an idea, in our, um, in our current auto shop, I believe the most clearance that um, we currently have is about 11 feet, just shy of 11 feet. So it'll be signific a significant improvement um, and really designed how an, an auto shop should be designed in order for lifts to, to operate uh, efficiently. Here you can see the final concrete slab flooring has been poured in that automotive shop. Um, again, the, the floors have a, a series of, of floor drains in them like uh, would be standard in, in any automotive shop. Um, there will be three bays in here. Um, the three bays will actually contain four lifts. One of the bays will have two lifts in it. The other ones will just have one. Um, again, if you have questions, by all means, you can, can uh, submit those questions. We will certainly try to, to get to those as well. Now you can see some images with some snow. Um, so a little, uh, this is actually work that was taking place last week. Um, doesn't look like a lot going on with this photo, but the important thing there is you can see the foam paneling that's starting to uh, be installed. Uh, that is work that continues uh, today. I had gone through or gone by um, the, the uh, construction site and, and they continue to work on that foam paddling. That's uh, really gonna be a big portion of the next couple of weeks with the facility project. So um, I know that you know everybody's kind of keeping an eye to watch the progress and, and I think what's gonna happen here over the next couple of weeks is the progress is going to slow a little bit because they're talking about really dedicating time to get that um, community center um, paneled, the roof on the community center insulated, and then the the um, the top of that roof complete. Give you some perspective as you kind of look at those construction photos. You can take a peek at at what the the final product. So this would be a, a photo from the west uh, side of the school. And that would be a, an image of that, um, the new addition. Um, the, the logo on the building is just there to represent that we are putting a logo. Um, that is my uh, um, limited technology skills. And so I, I, had, I, I put that logo there just so people understand there will be a logo that is not necessarily what the logo is gonna look like. Um, you'll have to forgive me, I, I'm dealing with some limited tech skills. So that's, that's what I uh, came up with on that. Um, 
Again, uh, that's kind of where things are at with the construction project. Um, the board recently reviewed the uh, budget and the thing that I can proudly report to all community members is the project remains on budget and um, you know, I don't want to get the cart too far in front of the horse, but so far the, the weather has cooperated and, and uh, our, our crews and, and uh, construction companies have been doing a, a real diligent job of, of staying on, on their calendar and, and on their um, time management. And so it's, it's really worked out well. They are on track. The entire project is right now scheduled to, to be turned over to the school district. Uh, in the middle of August of 2021. And that continues to be a, a good target date that we will be ready to, to open up that, the new addition and the, the new portions of the facility. Um, so again, it's exciting. It's uh, always uh, interesting to see what gets accomplished. Um, we will uh, be back for another town hall at the end of November. I don't have the date off the top of my head, but um, just so everybody understands, we will be targeting sometime around the last Monday of the month in order to do uh, a Facebook Live, a YouTube Live town hall. So if you want to just kind of keep that in the back of your mind, know that at the end of each month, um, there should be a, a new topic coming out. Um, as long as the construction project continues on, so through August of 2021, uh, the community can, can basically expect a, a project update uh, at the end of each, each Monday as well at each of those sessions. Um, so with that, I haven't seen any questions. Mary, have you seen any questions? I haven't seen any questions. Okay. Oh. Well, we want to thank you for taking time on a Monday to uh, check out how our facility project is going and also to learn a little bit about our communications lab makerspace at the elementary school. It is tremendously exciting to see the opportunities that, that students will have in that space. Mrs. Holmberg, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And I hope everybody tunes back in next month. Take care and stay well.